Okay. Ama Ama Sana was a white decision. Mamma, Parisha Kalabarna, Magi Bagata. Ama Kane Parisha Grata. Mamma, Parisha Kalabarni, me, 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 after the defense in Tiaganda Ru. So positioning is important. The lady should be lying in supine and should be on either side of the abdomen and legs should be kept straight. Right? So positioning you have to do by yourself. It can, you can't expect the attendant to do it. Then you are supposed to be having a chaperone as well. So I have an attendant here. Then after positioning, exposure is the next step. So exposure also you have to do it by yourself. Amma mama, you have to first tell what you are going to do and get her verbal consent. Amma mama, bada bada na me adhumu utta So you have to roll it and expose up to the CP star, right? Amma mama, saai utta gatta kama akne adha. So you have to most women they like to the underskirt to be taken up. You can either take it down, up or down, whichever way you like, right? So up to the CP star na, it should be exposed, and then you have to expose up to which point? Pubic symphysis, not mid thigh. Yeah, it's very important. So, from both aspects, you have to take it down. You have to always talk to the mother. You have to talk to the mother and keep her at ease. Right? You have to make her feel very comfortable throughout your examination. Right? And I, of course, I prefer to keep one hand on the shoulder so she feels more comfortable. Right? Okay, so then next point is inspection. On inspection, now they are in this abdomen. Abdomen is asymmetrically distended, where the distension is more towards the lower half of the abdomen and it is more prominent on the right lower quadrant. Right? So then there are the surgical scars, there is a suprapubic transverse surgical scar. You have to point it out and show. There is a suprapubic transverse surgical scar. Then the length you can calculate. Two fingers is three centimeters. One, two, three, four, five. Fifteen centimeters in length. I have taken a history so I know that this scar is indicating of the previous two cesarean sections. So these scars are possibly caught by the previous two C sections. Then there is a Intraambulacral transverse incision scar, and uh, then there's a, there are two uh, 0.5 centimeter size lateral scars, which are indicating of the previous laparoscopic surgery that she has undergone. Then the umbilicus is inverted. There is no Sister Joseph nodule, right? Okay. Olu usala amma kakul balan. There is no visible cough impulse. There is no palpable cough impulse. Right? So you have to look for inguinal hernias. Then now you go into palpation. Okay? So palpation first you have to do the superficial palpation. So on superficial palpation, before you start, you say, "Amma, mama, they are going to all about." Mohir, Kohir, if you want to see another, no, no. Or if you want to see another, my husband is going to see another. Are you? Pass swing in there. How do you smoke? Are you going to cut another? Ask her to breathe. So she is more at ease. And on my superficial palpation, I am mainly looking for the tenderness. But she has such a big mass, which is prominent even on superficial palpation. So superficial palpation, I can feel a mass in the lower half of the abdomen right but rest of the abdomen is soft and non-tender okay now you have to define whether this abdomen is this mass is intra-abdominal and whether this mass is which part of the abdomen this mass is arising how you do that is you keep your hand on the mass right when the anterior abdominal wall muscles are contracted the mass is less prominent. Therefore, this mass is arising from the abdominal cavity. Right? Then, I can't get below the mass. However, I can get above the mass. Therefore, this mass is arising from the pelvis. 
then the size you are going to demarcate by you start from the sepi sternum you come down right so the upper board of the mass is at the umbilicus therefore it is equal to a to a 20 week gravid uterus in size then you come from either side right do it very gently right so this is deep palpation where you are feeling the mass and do you demarcate the size right okay so the mass is occupying the lower half of the abdomen and is more towards the right side its margins are well demarcated it has a bosselated surface because there there are lumps on the mass so probably this is these are is caused by a fibroid tube margins are well demarcated its surface is bosselated right and it is firm in consistency it is mobile in the horizontal axis however it is not mobile in the vertical axis right. okay then now we i have commented about the mass that is arising from the pelvis next is i have to look for the liver spleen and the two kidneys then i have to look for free flow there is a important point when you are palpating right when you are palpating superficial and deep palpation when you keep the hand you have to look at the hand then you have to look at the patient's face right so this is how you do it you look at the hand and you look at the face right you when you keep the hand on the abdomen you look keep look at the hand when you are pressing down you look at the face so you know whether you are hurting the patient or not right so that should be synchronized always understood right so now i am going to look for the liver how you look for the liver is you start from the right iliac fossa you ask the patient to breathe amma mama ki uham usma gamburi usme atulta ganna hari usma gan when she is breathing in you press in when she is breathing out you let go right so the upper ma the lower board of the liver will be hitting on your fingers so her liver is not enlarged let's say if there was a enlarged liver then you would say sir i can feel a mass in the right hypochondrium i can't get above the mass it has a smooth margin or a irregular margin right and its dullness is continuous with the liver dullness and there are no resonant bands overlying the mass therefore it is the enlarged liver that's how you come in then you have to look for the spleen how you look for it you start again from the right iliac fossa you ask her to breathe then palpate amma gabri usmagan gabri usmagan gabri usmagan mage patter chutta kare ha gabri usmagan hari hondai ane killing adre so the spleen is not enlarged if it is enlarged how you are going to say is there is a mass arising from the left hypochondrium which is extending down the axis of the 11th rib okay then it moves with respiration there are no resonant bands on top there this is the enlarged spleen then you are going to look for kidneys kidneys you look for palatable kidneys right you keep your lower hand on the loin and see if it is palatable she is obese or so most probably won't be able to feel it if the kidneys are enlarged how are you going to define it you will say i can feel a mass in the right right uh lumbar region right it i can get above the mass as well as i can get below the mass it has a smooth surface and it moves with respiration the mass is palatable therefore it is a palatable kidney and the kidney is enlarged right you are done so we have completed the palpation now next is you go for percussion so percussion first you look for flank dullness so you can see the resonance you can hear the resonance so you look for flank dullness if there is flank dullness then you have to look for horseshoe dullness right so you per percuss this way if there is horseshoe dullness you are going to look for shifting dullness 
how do you look for shifting tunnels? You ask the patient to turn towards your side, right? Turn towards your side and then give about 30 seconds and work us and see, look for shifting tunnels. If they are shifting tunnels, you look for a fluid trail. Fluid trail, you ask the mother to keep the hand like this and you keep one hand on this side and tap on the other side to look for a fluid trail, right? Then there is a gross assignment. Right. To complete your examination, <coughs> you will palpate for the inguinal lymph nodes. Since it's a mass, it can be a malignancy as well. So you have to complete by doing the lymph nodes. And if it is malignancy, you will say, I want to palpate for the supraclavicular uh, supra node. If you have not done the general examination, you have done the general examination, you have to look for that as well. What is the other system you have to assess? You have to assess the lungs. Right, lungs should be assessed for uh, pleural effusions. Okay, so you have to work as a lung and auscultate as well. So that concludes abdominal examination. Okay, if there is a large mass which is arising from the pelvis, one more thing you can do is you can work as above the mass to see if you can't clearly demarcate the mass. Now, here I said that it's 20, 20 weak sites. Why? Because I can clearly note the upper margin, but if you can't note the upper margin, the next step is you can percuss and see where the dullness begins. So it begins here. See? Resonant dull. This is dull. Can you hear? This is resonant. Right? Then this is dull. Top, top girl in it. So this is dull. That way also you can identify the margin. Then you, while percussing, you will see if there is any resonance on the mass. If there is resonance, there are resonant bands on and off bands on top of the mass. So that means the mass is arising posteriorly. Bubbles are overlying the mass. But here there is no such thing. Right? So that concludes the examination. Okay. So surgical exam gyne abdomen auscultation is not necessary because we don't look for bruise on these masses that we get. But for surgical abdomen you have to do auscultation. 2 centimeters above and lateral to the mid above the umbilicus lateral to the midline you have to auscultate for renal artery fluids right and if you want to check for bowel sounds also you can do uh, Are it? Gyne it's not necessary you don't do auscultation